everybody. Uh, Gabby wanted me to do something on 9-11, uh, a video, and you know, uh, yeah, that's an important thing to, 9-11 is obviously very important. But I wanna just start out really personally. Um, first of all, I finally lost the tooth that has been trying to come out for a year. See that? <laughs> now, remember we're in the Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter time in Capricorn. And what governs teeth? Saturn. I know a woman who's getting all her teeth replaced by implants, Saturn and Pluto. And I'd say Pluto would be the unearthing of this tooth, which took so long to come out. And now I have to decide, you know, what am I gonna do about this? Am I gonna do something about this aesthetically? No, but if it's structural, if, if it will make these other teeth um, move, then I'll do something and there is a, a quick solution of cementing it in, you know, carving it off and cementing it into the other teeth if they're struck, if they're sound enough, if they're in there anchored enough. So that's a possibility. But anyway, I'm going to find out tomorrow. So um, just wanted to start that way, just to say we're all in a very Saturn-Pluto time, uh, Saturn-Pluto-Jupiter time on all sorts of levels. And with 9-11 coming up, when she said, do one on 9-11, I thought, okay, so I got together with my, my left brain. What facts should I bring up? What facts should I talk about that, that disprove the quote official version? And I thought, I've been doing that forever. And so has everybody else been doing that forever. Anybody that really thinks the official version is correct is obviously kidding themselves by this time. And what does that mean? What does that mean if they do such an elaborate ruse? Who's they? I mean, that's always the question. Such an elaborate ruse that, that is obviously meant to sacrifice 3,000 people also and leaves a gaping hole, which is filled with ashes. Uh, what? Came down like that? Wait a minute, what's going on? So I don't want to go back to the facts. I don't want to go into the facts. I don't want to go into the left brain. I want to get into the right brain and the heart because those are what is missing in our culture. So the left brain has been contaminated by all sorts of things. Um, fake news, you know, disinfo, um, just the constant digital stream of everything that's coming in from every direction. And we're all just fried by the whole thing, I mean, clearly. So here we are leading up to the 19th anniversary, or is it the 20th anniversary? I keep counting it and it seems like it's the 19th, but then some people say it's the 20th. But in any case, up to 20, 2020, the anniversary of 9-11. And that many years has passed. And uh, terrorists have still not managed to take down this United States, even though they certainly predicted that would happen after 9-11. And that, of course, is why they rolled out the Patriot Act and, uh, you know, put the the uh, Homeland Security together with those those uniforms that remind me of of Germany in brown uniforms <laughs> and made us take off our shoes and, and all our keys and so forth at the airport the, all that started then uh, but long before that so I don't want to go back into all the stuff that we've talked about in other other uh, Chromecasts um, having to do with the the misuse of our intelligence, uh, both our intelligence and the intelligence of the United States and the intelligence of the deep state to put its people in fear. And fear is really the name of the game still. In fact, it's much ramped up this year um, with the COVID. So I wanna tell you a great story today that happened because um, I never wear masks when I'm outside and wear a mask. I go into the store that I have to wear a mask in and I will put it in, out, on right as I enter, or right after I enter even, right? And then I always leave my nose uncovered. Nobody's dared to say anything to me yet. If they do, I say, I'll just tell them I wanna breathe. Or I'll say, do you really think a virus can't get through this, any mask? You know, a virus that is incredibly small? You know, something like that, I might, might ask a question. In any case, um, we're also leading up to the 15th of September, which John Galt, who is a possible contender for being JFK Jr., uh, is promoting this idea that we all take off our masks on September 15th. 
And by the way, I saw today on my Twitter feed that there is a place, I think it was in Italy, where there was a, a group of people and they're all throwing their masks on the ground. It kind of reminded me of the Vietnam War that where they threw their, what they throw on the ground? A draft cards. Their draft cards, yeah. And they were stomping on them. It was great. It was like a, a little scene of insurrection, you might say, against the prevailing powers that be. Okay, so today I'm out there with Puppy, Puppy Shadow, and as usual, I pass some people with masks looking very worried and, you know, tight and constricted. And then a few people are walking, striding along like I am with no, not a care in the world. It's like two different worlds. It truly is two different worlds that we're living in. And the fear world is much the prevailing world, obviously. But there's these currents of joy, currents of love, currents of care for one another that are moving through this COVID current. And I think that that's happening more and more. So I'm going, I went into this neighborhood today, uh, a neighborhood that has big houses on big lawns. I wanted to see how many Biden signs there were, probably 50 houses, two which in a democratic town isn't very many. Okay, but what happened today is as I'm striding along the street with my little dog, this woman comes out of the door and she says, hi, like just joyful. I said, hi. So we had this great conversation. It lasted about 20 minutes. And it turns out she was born in that house and has just moved back. Her father has just died. She's just created a perennial garden for him in the backyard, which she showed me. She's a veterinarian who's taking a little time off now. She said, but I'm going over to so-and-so's house to, to take care of Obi, who's some dog that is in the neighborhood. I said, oh, would you consider being a vet in my neighborhood? She said, yes. <laughs> I loved. So, so if I have a problem now, I will call her first. And if she can take care of it, she will. And, that's so, and then she's very much in the idea of people sharing, people sharing, you know, bringing extra produce to other people, they bringing other things to your house. And this has been going on in that neighborhood, which is not obvious to me because it still seems like it's big old houses with nobody outside and uh, big lawns and everybody's going to work. That's what it looks like from the outside, but apparently it isn't. And she is like this, what would you call her? She's an insurrectionist of a different kind. Instead of the riots and the protesters, She's doing quietly doing this work, which she's meant to do in her own neighborhood that she grew up in. And by the way, when she was 11, she went to work for a vet that lived down the street and his partner was down the street the other way. So she is very used to the idea of actual real neighborhoods, which we used to have in this culture, even with the suburbs built up the way they were to separate us from one another. And so she said, you know, where, where do you live? I told her and she said, oh, oh, I know that place. She said, I, I, I go by it on my bike. I always wondered about it. So I said, well, come in and take the tour someday. And um, so then finally at the very end, I said, and what's your name? And her name is Joy. <laughs> I love that. Her name is Joy. So. The point is we need to inculcate a spirit of joy of love that overwhelms the fear. Okay, that is so strong the fear just recedes, just recedes into the background. It just is just boring. We're bored with fear. Yeah, I wanna say F fear, <laughs> FF, okay? And we need to do that because otherwise there's no way to, to counter anything with facts because facts, you can always pull up other facts and some of the facts are real, some aren't. You never really know, you can't really prove anything. But we can change the atmosphere, we can change the, completely change the atmosphere of this time simply by invoking the, the atmosphere of love and of joy for everyone that's alive and for the entire universe, including, of course, Mother Earth. So happy 9-11, folks, when we're going to have an emergence now, not an emergency, but an emergence of something entirely other than what they're trying to feed us. Thanks.